we had a terrible parenting strategy whenever we had Judah, which basically meant that we had no parenting strategy at all. Well, hey friends, <laughs> welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome to you as well. My name is Jonathan and this channel is a place where we talk about all things family, we dive deep into God's word together, and we do all of this because we just wanna know and enjoy Jesus together. If that sounds like something that you're into, then come and join our family by hitting the subscribe button and that'll just let you know when we post our next video. As you can tell, I'm joined here today by our newest addition. <laughs> this little newbie here uh, is a little over a week old and I just wanted to officially introduce you to Mr. Milo Solomon Martin. Our labor this time was intense and it was really different than either of our first two kiddos and if hearing about the labor story is something that's interesting to you. We actually documented the whole thing over on our Instagram channel, on our Instagram stories, and we saved a highlight. So you can go over there and you can watch all about the arrival of Mr. Milo over on our Instagram channel. Apart from the labor being pretty intense, I'm really just thankful because both mom and baby are doing super great. And uh, you know, apart from just adjusting to life with three kids, uh, Emily is actually over the moon. She has been looking forward to little baby snuggles for a while now. Judah and June are loving baby brother Milo and they have already proven to be such great helpers. We all are just so thankful that he is here and we're just trying to get back into the groove here at home now that we have this little newbie sitting around. While we were in the hospital, I was remembering and reflecting on all kinds of things, but mainly remembering what it was like to have Judah, our first kid, over eight years ago. So while we were in the hospital, um, one of those mornings, while we weren't getting a lot of sleep, um, I decided to pull out my camera and share just a few of my thoughts with you. Friends, ah! it's March 1st. It's about almost noon and we are headed to the hospital. Apparently, a friend of mine texted me and said, I have leveled up to dad level three. <laughs> so I am leveling up. It's hopefully our last morning here in the hospital. We get to go home today. It's early, I'm trying to wake up. Milo is sleeping behind me. Emily is in the shower getting ready uh, so that we can go home today. But this whole delivery and labor of little Milo has really just made me think a lot about, you know, having Judah eight years ago. I can't believe that it's been eight years ago. And if you don't know the story, um, Judah was a little bit of a surprise for us. <laughs> we were not expecting necessarily to have a baby um, eight years ago. We were happy to have a baby. We wanted to have kids. Uh, we just weren't expecting to have kids when we did. Emily and I were both 25 and we'd only been married for about two and a half years when we just kind of suddenly found out that Emily was pregnant with Judah Man and we were so thrilled and it was such a blessing. It just was a little bit shocking as well because we just weren't planning for that. We had a terrible parenting strategy whenever we had Judah, which basically meant that we had no parenting strategy at all. We were worship leaders at a church at that time. We were also youth leaders at that time, kind of part-time. Oh yeah, and we were also the church janitors. We were just doing a lot of different things. We were so invested in sharing our faith professionally, you know, through music, through worship leading, through um, being youth leaders. And uh, we just cared about that a lot. But when we had Judah, you know, we hadn't really thought much about how we wanted to share our faith with our kids or with Judah specifically. We didn't have a strategy for how we were gonna share our faith with our son. And you might be like, well, he was only just a little tiny infant. And you're right, he was really little and it's hard to share your faith with a tiny little infant but the truth is that we didn't really have a strategy at all um, for a good five or six years on how we were going to share our faith with our kids it wasn't really until a few years ago that we started to feel a real lack of integrity between 
who we were on stage at church and who we were being at home. It's not that we were hooligans at home or being totally different people, but in our job, you know, we were making such a diligent effort to think about how we were speaking about who God is and sharing the truth about who God is. Um, we were being diligent to share our testimonies and we were being diligent to share our faith. But then at home, you know, we were never really talking about these things. And we were specifically never really talking about these things with our kids. You know, Emily and I have a kind of relationship where we talk together about things about the Lord, or we talk about things um, that, that we're learning in the Word, um, but we weren't sharing these things intentionally or diligently with our kids. We, as a family, rarely read the Word together. We didn't really read the Word to Judah. Um, we were not praying together um, and we you know would play music sometimes in our home because we're musical people um, but you might be surprised at how little music we actually play considering we're songwriters and worship leaders um, music wasn't something we did as much as you might think um, but we definitely weren't making a point to really worship God together in our home you know many families are really great with go with the flow faith in their homes you know, when we do that, we're hoping that our kids will somehow just absorb our faith along the way. And we're hoping that we will someday find ourselves in a situation where we're able to talk about our faith with our kids and have these kind of epic conversations about who God is. And, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to knock on those families because honestly, I think that was us too. That's basically how we thought about sharing faith in our home or having conversations about God. But we really started feeling convicted about this a couple years ago. Um, one of the main scriptures that resonated in our hearts as we began to feel convicted about this was Deuteronomy 6, where God says this to his people. And these words that I command you shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. That word diligently is really what got us. You know, I want to obey God and I want to be diligent about sharing these things with my kids. But the thing is that I'm not really sure how to be diligent without also being intentional. So that's why a few years ago, we started trying to be intentional and diligent to take just five to 10 minutes a day to read God's word as a family, to pray and to worship God together. And the thing is that we failed at this a lot. We had to restart a lot. And even to this day, let me just tell you that we do not do this every day. We're honestly doing really good if we can get a good solid five days of this in each week. That's a win for us, it's five days a week. Starting out five days a week was not the win. It was a win if we could do like two or three days a week. But as we kind of built this habit in our family, what we found is that when we are diligent and intentional to set aside this tiny amount of time in our family life, this small amount of time has really just started to shift our family culture. We are now so much more likely to talk about God th throughout our day just randomly. So you might think, oh, if I'm being intentional to have these conversations of faith, you know, maybe it's gonna seem not organic to talk about God, but we found just the opposite. The more that we're diligently talking about God, just in these five to 10 minute windows, it produces more organic conversations about God and faith throughout our day with one another and with our kids. Various things throughout our day remind us of that story in the Bible that we read together just a few days ago. Or our kids, whenever questions pop up in their mind throughout the day, they just begin to start asking us questions about the stories that we read or the things that we talk about. I trust God with those first five to six years of not really having a parenting strategy with Judah whenever it comes to sharing our faith. Even though we didn't really have a plan or strategy on how to share our faith with Judah, you know, God has been so faithful. He is so gracious and kind to us and he's been faithful to, to draw our hearts nearer and nearer to him and he's been faithful to continue to draw Judah's heart to himself. But I have to say that I am really excited about the family culture that we've been able to create and the family culture that we're still creating. I'm excited for baby three back there to enter into this beautiful family life that God has called us to create as we diligently seek to share our faith with one another in our home. You know, that's just not something that we're ever gonna regret. And it's something I'm excited for Milo to enter into 
uh, as we go home. That's the thing about God's commands. His commands, they make our lives more beautiful, not less beautiful. <laughs> That's been true for our story as we've leaned into God's call on our lives as parents. Yes, there has been challenges. Yes, there have been discouragements. And yes, there have been obstacles, but it's been more than worth it so far. And if you're watching this and you don't have kids, you know, I just want to say that this family culture of worshiping God together in your home is not something that you have to wait to start until you have kids. Honestly, the earlier you start, the easier it is to really implement this culture into your life and into your family life. If you're married, then start family worship together with your spouse by just spending a little bit of time together reading God's word, praying, and singing. If you're single, maybe there's a roommate or a friend that you could meet with or gather with or FaceTime with a little bit every day where you just, again, read God's word, pray, and sing together. And if anything, you can begin to dream and pray and plan on creating this family culture in your home of worshiping God together. Well, it sounds like Emily just got out of the shower and um, <laughs> sounds like Milo's waking up a little bit. I want to show you him this morning because he's so cute when he wakes up in the morning. We love talking about family worship. We're constantly um, putting out all kinds of videos and resources to help encourage you or help you just through the practical tips and tricks of how to do that. Or maybe even just, you know, providing you with resources to uh, just pick up that you, so you can just start. So uh, make sure you uh, follow this channel, like the channel, so you can get all the videos and resources um, that we have available for you that we're gonna continue to post. Let's go see Milo. All right, friends, we love you guys, and we will see you in the next video.